Again, thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. We appreciate it. And if you would, turn in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. I told Pastor Keith about this theme as he was thinking of doing something very similar and uh, he didn't end up using it so I thought well I might as well uh, grab it and use it but I like it because to revamp is really what God is doing in all of our lives yeah. if you think about it in 1st Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 23 1st Thessalonians chapter 5 Verse number 23, the Bible says there, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly. To sanctify is the Old Testament word hallow. And God told the children of Israel... He said, I am the Lord which hallow you, in Leviticus 22, verse 32. To hallow is to make one clean, ceremonially or morally. It's to consecrate something, to dedicate it to a purpose, to make something holy by purifying it, by preparing it. It simply means to make something holy, fit, and ready for its purpose purpose. In other words, God is revamping our lives for his will to be done. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the message tonight. Father, we thank you for the work you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood that begins that work. And thank you for the salvation that you offer so freely to those who will believe. I pray tonight that you'd bless as we consider your work throughout our lives to revamp us and sanctify us and make us fit and ready for your purpose. May you open our eyes to the truth and may we walk into it willingly, trusting you and knowing that you are at work to bring it to pass as only you can. May you bless tonight as we consider these few moments. God is revamping our lives. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Turn over, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. The process, as I said in my testimony, begins even before we get saved. I'm sure as you look back on your life, before you were saved, you saw that there was a work going on that was going to change your life. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 here, in verse number 11, Paul talks to the church in Corinth about the difference that salvation has made in their lives. And that's the first thing we see is that even before, but in salvation, God revamps our lives. First Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse 11, he says, And such, as he had named here, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, uh, all of that in verse 10. And he says in verse 11, And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. God does a work through salvation that nothing else can do. We can't turn over a new leaf. We can't go through any 12-step program. There's nothing that will accomplish what salvation does because it's the work of God. Look back in John chapter number 16. God does this work on those that are lost. Now, God is working, I believe, always around us. And John 16 teaches that by his spirit, he's doing something in the lives of lost people, even lost people. And I can look back on my life and see this myself. In John chapter number 16, Jesus told what the spirit of God would do when he came in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come... He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9 says, Of sin because they believe not on me. 
of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So he's telling us here the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of every person, lost people especially, to show them that they are exposed, to show them that there's no blood on the door, to show them that the penalty is coming. Even the prince of this world, Satan himself, is judged. He has an end. Praise God for that. But lost people are facing the same end, the lake of fire. And he reproves the world of sin because they've not believed on Christ. That's the difference between saved and lost. Believing on, trusting on Christ and his finished work. Nothing in my hand I bring, only to the cross I cling. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. And when a person is convicted of that and comes to that knowledge of that truth that their sins are not covered until they come and trust in the shed blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, they will have no rest and no peace. He will reprove, he will teach, he will guide, he will instruct, he will remind people about their sin because they've not believed on Jesus. He will remind people of the righteousness of God because Jesus isn't here. He is the reminder of God's holiness and righteousness. And he will remind people of what is to come. I often tell the story of that man that I was working for, the carpenter, was going to the house, that million dollar home I mentioned when I saw the tent meeting. After I was saved, we went back to work, or after I was, uh, after that, no, during, sorry, before that meeting, when we were working for that man, I had been saved earlier, and I went to that gentleman, and I wanted to witness to everybody, and I was witnessing to this million-dollar man. He had everything. And I'm witnessing to him, asking him if he's saved, and he said, ah, oh, that, that's just a waste. He said, I had a girlfriend, and she would talk to me about that stuff, and she was born again, and she, all she would talk about was sin. These are the very words out of his mouth. All she would ever talk about was sin. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. He said, that's all she ever talked about. And I often thought to myself later, I bet that's not all she talked about, but that's all he heard. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he hadn't believed on Christ. The Holy Spirit is at work when anyone witnesses, when anyone gives someone else the scriptures, the word of God, a testimony. The Holy Spirit is working to reprove the world of sin and bring them to Christ. Look in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. This is the method. This is the way. And, and, and it's God's work. It's the way God has chosen to save those that will believe. 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. Notice the work here that he does in verse number 13. The Bible says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through, here's how God brings someone to salvation, through sanctification of the Spirit. There's a revamp going on all the time. God is reproving and bringing conviction and drawing people to himself through the work of the Spirit of God, through sanctification of the Spirit. And then when they are coming to that knowledge, that conviction, someone comes with the gospel. That's where you and I come in. We can't convict, but we can work with the Holy Spirit as he does. And we can come with the gospel, the truth. Why? Notice, and belief of the truth. As God works and draws them, we bring the gospel and present it to them, and they believe the truth. Verse 14 says, Whereunto, to that sanctification of the Spirit and believe in the truth, whereunto he called you, how? By our gospel. Paul said, my job was to go and preach the gospel. I'd go and tell people about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in any form and way and method I can with a VBS on the bus. However I can do it, I just get the gospel out there and God begins to sanctify people through the Holy Ghost. He begins a revamp work in the lives of lost people and then they see the truth and they believe it and God saves them. And notice, to the obtaining, verse 14, to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, through salvation, declares you and I, when we get saved, to be holy. Yes. He sanctifies us holy. Amen. 
Spirit, soul, and body. Hey, my body's waiting to be sanctified completely. I understand that. It'll be sanctified when I'm taken out of the presence of sin. And praise the Lord one day, he's coming again. And I'm going to go up with him forever to be with the Lord. And my body will see that complete and total sanctification. But it's a finished work already. He's done it all. I'm just working along and going along and stepping into his steps that he has for me. And it's the same with you. He is doing a work of revamping, but not only in salvation. He does a work of revamping and renewing in our lives in our surrender. God revamps us when we give ourselves to him. Look in Romans chapter 12, if you would. Romans chapter number 12. I told you about that evangelist that came to our town of Butte, Montana when I was, had been saved eight months and he came in and preached some amazing messages and Romans chapter 12 was one of those. I learned about the redeeming lamb, the Passover lamb when I was saved and I learned about this lamb of surrender one of those nights in August 1993. He preached a great message but he came here to Romans chapter number 12 and he told us about the lamb that the children of Israel offered to the Lord in sacrifice. When they gave it to God, they took their hands off and said, Lord, it's yours. It's no longer mine. It's yours to do with as you will. And they gave that lamb as a sacrifice, right? Yeah. He read this passage to us right after telling us that illustration. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, verse 1, Romans 12, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Notice it's holy, acceptable unto God. Now, I can't make myself holy. I can follow after God's holiness, but he is the one who makes us holy, and he does it by this revamping work in our lives, and he makes us acceptable to him. Look over in Romans chapter 15 then, Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 16. Paul said that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. Notice that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Why? Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit of God through that revamping work that makes us an acceptable sacrifice to God. And God accepts our sacrifice. And God will use us. Paul Saren Joji, the young man you saw in the video, and I'm sure you might have wondered, you see him sitting at the front. When he's being ordained, he had his legs crossed and he was sitting at the front and we were praying for him or standing around him. And you saw him also, if you noticed, back in the back of the Bible college room, he was on the floor on a small bench teaching the Bible college students. At a young age, Paul had polio and he lost the use of his legs. Doesn't have any use from the knee down, he just crawls on his hands and knees. He got saved as a teenager, was coming to church with the missionary's bus or van, and uh, came to church. And then when we went, we started picking him up. And Paul, I'm sure he may have struggled with uh, what happened to me and, and why did this happen. And he grew in his life and grew in the Lord. And then he came to Bible college after he finished school. And he grew in the Lord more and he was learning uh, how to begin to lead others. He came to a point in his life of surrender where he said, Lord, I, this is the body I have. Amen. And he learned that God had made it holy and acceptable to him. He'll have a new body one day. Praise Amen. the Lord for that. Amen. But he took what he had and he said, Lord, I give it to you, a living sacrifice. Amen. I take my hands off and it's yours. Do with it what you will. God has taken that broken body and spoke to that young man's heart. And he crawls to his once, uh, once it was a pedal bicycle with his hands, now it's a motorcycle that he can, hit three wheels and he can putter down the road. But he goes on that bike and then goes to the taxi. Somebody to help him get into the taxi. They take him about 45 minutes to the ferry. Somebody helps him get on the ferry. They take him another, I don't know, it's a 15, 20 minute ride to Kalangala Island, Lake Victoria, second largest freshwater lake in the world. 83 islands lay off the coast from where our town is. 83 islands on the Sese Island chain. He goes to the largest one, meets with policemen, disciples them. He goes down there a good 45 minutes, takes another mile ride in a boat over to another island of Chivunza. He's meeting with the gentleman you saw in the video who was driving the boat, and he stays at his house, and they go and visit fishing villages 
all around those islands. He said, Pastor, he told me, Pastor, he was going once a month, and now he's going twice a month. He said, Pastor, last furlough. He said, I want to reach all 83 islands with the gospel. I said, Paul, we're going to pray for you, and I'm going to ask people to pray for you. And I did, and people gave enough to buy that boat you saw on the engine. They pick him up, set him in that boat, and he goes to those villages. They pick him up, set him on the tarp. He sits on a box, preaches the gospel. I went with him. I was so blessed. There was a young man that, uh, and his wife that want to go to those islands full time as missionaries. They were with us. And we went to this fishing village and we all preached. And it seemed like nothing was happening. He gets the microphone and everybody just settles and listens real intently as he preaches the gospel. Eight people came forward and trusted Christ as their Savior. God just uses that young man. Yeah. Why? He said, Lord, this is what I have. I give yeah. it to you. I just give it up. I surrender. And God sanctified his body to be used of God to take the gospel to those that need it. Yes. But can I say, even when we're serving God, God's not finished with this revamp work. In our service, God continues to revamp us. Look, if you would, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 3. We'll look down in verse number 9. There have been times, and I'm ashamed to say it, but I'll be on the mission field and I'll think to myself, and I think later, what are you thinking? I'm a missionary. I don't have any problem with sanctification. I don't have any problem with dedication. I'm on the mission field. I'd never have a struggle with anything like that. It's not true. It's not true. It doesn't matter who we are, where we are, there's always something that God wants to do to revamp our lives. There's always something he's working on within us to make us more like him. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse number 9, the Bible says, For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face. This is a church that really was doing pretty well. They're a model church in Thessalonica. But notice what he says, that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. These are people who were serving God. They were doing well. You could go through an outline of the, uh, the church at Thessalonica. They're doing the things that you were doing tonight, praying and reaching people with the gospel. And Paul says, I want to come to you and perfect. I want God to use me to do a revamp work in your life and bring something to perfection to help your faith to grow. Isn't that a blessing? It's nice to know that even when we're serving God, there's something to look forward to. There's something more that God has for us. God wants us to be perfected in our faith and service to him. Verse 11 says, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. He sends and directs men into our lives for that very purpose. I thank the Lord for the day I met Pastor Shiflett. I thank the Lord for the day I met many men of God in my life who have done something that I can remember and I relate to and I bring back to my mind again and again and think, I need to grow in that area. Because that's what the Lord wants from us. Amen. What does he want? It continues here in verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. This causes our love to increase and makes a revamp work in our lives to cause us in our love to grow. Verse 13, he says, to the end. He may establish your Amen. hearts. Yes. Yeah. When we're serving God, sometimes we question, why, Lord? Yeah. Why do we face some of the things we face? Why do we see other people face some of the things they face in their service to God? They're doing great things. Why do they suffer? To the end. God has a purpose. There's an end to keep in mind and keep it in mind. We're going through these things sometimes that cause us to suffer, but there is an end in mind, and God knows it, and he's working everything together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming 
of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. With the Sebioto that you saw in the video, he finished the Bible college. I, th I think it took him 12 years, four-year course. He was in and out, and he was struggling sometimes. And he was about 50 years old, I think, when he finished. But he finished. He was the first man I led to Christ in Uganda. Amen. First Sunday I preached, as well as I can remember it. We've talked about it, and neither of us can quite pick it out exactly. But according to my letters, I think he was the very first Sunday I preached, led him to Christ. He's been with us ever since. Amen. He said, Pastor, pray for me. I want to be like Moses. I don't want my natural force to abate. I want to plant churches till I'm 80 years old. Well, when the average life expectancy is 47, that'll be something only God can do. But God can do it. What a desire. What a desire. In serving God, he revamps our lives and gives us his desires for what he would like to accomplish. Would you bow your heads? Close your eyes. With heads bowed and eyes closed.